we want to make bold to say that airlines of Nigeria never got together to increase their base fares. It never happened. We debunk that insinuation that the airlines got together. <laughs> we, we debunk that insinuation that airlines got together to fix prices. And I want to say something here, whether we believe it or we don't believe it. The 50,000 you have seen on our inventory has always been there. For the last five years, 50,000 fare has always been there. During Christmas time, December, the period of December, you notice that fares, the basic fares going to certain areas in the country will be maybe 60, 70,000. Airlines didn't come together to decide to do that. It's a matter of you working out your unit cost per seat of your operations. What is the unit cost per seat of your operation? Then you, that will determine your basis. During those periods, you notice that some areas you will fly into full and you'll be coming out with zero passengers. So airlines will just on their own individually fix their prices to, you know, at least get their costs covered. In the same vein, Jet A1 fuel has risen from 200 naira to a liter to 430 naira to a liter. It's only a very stupid businessman that would not know that there is fire in the mountain. two years ago and I compared to what it is now and I went oh my goodness and I, that has been the case for a lot of people and I imagine that it is a big deal a big concern so this morning we're digging deep really to understand what's what's going on and what's the way forward and to do that with us as you may have seen we have uh, Captain Ado Sinusi who is an aviation expert he joins us live from our Lagos studio. And joining us virtually is Mr. Bernard Bankoli, who's the Chairman Association of Airline Training Organization of Nigeria, is also Chairman Finch Glow Group Limited. Gentlemen, good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, Captain, let me begin with you. Thank Clearly you. not not good times for air travel in Nigeria. Yes, I mean, we know about the whole COVID-19, the fallout and how the sector has struggled, but this is like a part two of what we hoped would not happen again. I mean, we've heard Aon talk about the side, their side of the story, essentially, but, but for you, really, bringing everything together, what are your immediate thoughts? Well, the, the, um, increase in prices, ticket prices, in, is inevitable because the cost of... Uh, operation of an airline has increased because of world pricing. Uh, this will result definitely in an increase in price. Now, the way of mana and how much uh, the increase was done could be debatable because I don't think uh, it is commensurate with the increase in the cost of uh, operation. And the way the airlines responded, uh, meaning that all, mostly all the airlines responded equally. Uh, with uh, uh, saying that uh, ticket, let's say, from Lagos to Abuja is 50,000. I think they, they, that, that creates suspicion. And I think the aviation regulator should look into it to see whether there was a connivance to increase the price. And that will be a violation of uh, anti-competition uh, regulations and laws. Mm. And that will also uh, be a violation for free economy. Now, the airlines are struggling, no doubt about it. 
but the way they increase prices, and you know, they have to file in uh, prices every season with the, with the regulators. And when they do that, they, they will stick to those prices that they have filed in. Now, if there's any increase, uh, let's say for uh, Jet A1, um, then they can go back to the price uh, index where they have the, uh, uh, they call it the fuel surcharge. They can increase it the same amount the fuel marketers have increased of uh, the Jet A1 in the market. And uh, looking at what happened in December and what's happening in January or February, the increase in fuel price is close to about 20%. If you go back to November to, to February, the increase averagely is about 40%. So I think that should translate into ticket prices of about that 40%. There are other factors, you know, there are other factors that uh, contribute to ticket pricing. And that's why it's a bit, a bit suspicious when you see all the airlines uh, increasing the prices the same time, the same amount. No, so so you, 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 you spoke about the fact that price increase is inevitable. Yeah. And now, are you by any chance suggesting um, a review of these prices and who is to do this review? Uh, they are all competitors, just as you have said, but they all agreed that this is what we need to do in the light of all of these things that's happening to us. Yes, and that's why I said the regulator, the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, should investigate. Should Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority have any role to play in ticket pricing? No, it's deregulated. Okay. But as I said, despite the fact that it's deregulated, you as an airline individually will file in, for every season, you will file in your prices. This is the starting price and this is the highest bucket that I'm going to charge. And you can't charge outside those buckets. Now, if there is any increase and it happens that all the airlines are increasing the price, at the same time, with the same amount. Bearing in mind that these airlines have different financial models, different business model. How will airline A increase by 100% and then the price becomes around 50,000? Airline B, with different business model, different financial model, increase the same to the same 50,000. But they operate in the same market. They buy the same Jet A1, except they buy from different you know, sources at different rates, but essentially operational costs might boil down to be the same. So isn't that a fair argument? Yeah, it's a fair argument, but bear in mind, the cost of fueling is about uh, between 30 to 40 percent of the cost of an airline operation. And bear in mind, some airlines have brand new airplanes. That is a cost. Some airlines have already paid for their airplanes. Some airlines are paying the banks. So there is different financial models for different airlines. I don't believe that uh, if an airline A is charging 50,000 and has brand new airplanes, and airline B is charging 50,000 and he has already paid for his aircrafts and the aircrafts are 20, 30 years old, I think there should be a difference. Mm. You as a passenger too, if you enter a new airplane, you should pay a little extra. And if you enter an old airplane, you should pay a little less. I mean, interesting point there. So let me take this to Mr. Bankole, because for the average, uh, what do I say, consumer now, <laughs> but, uh, the flyer, it's not funny times, really. No. But it looks like Aon is making a case and saying, well, this is the reality and this is the way to go. But Captain, Captain Sinusi thinks there's some suspicion around this and it, it doesn't quite go down well. Is that your viewpoint also from where you sit? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I can agree less with him, and it's quite unfortunate. Um, there are certain things in the industry that we consider as illegal. Uh, the cost of uh, the fare of tickets is um, the responsibility, a commercial decision of every airline. And they have a right to how much they want to sell their tickets. However, we have the regulatory, we actually have a directory in the NCA, Director of Air Transport Regulation, that monitors the airfare filed by each of these airlines. So the question is this, 
how were they able to come up with similar fare that is almost the same and that it happened about the same time? Something is fishy and something is fundamentally wrong. Yes, AON can come to the public and say to us that, wait, 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 we didn't fix these prices. But the question in here is this. How did it happen? How are they able to come up with something similar within a short period and at the same time? Something is wrong. And this is where the regulatory needs to move in and explain to the general public that they've done their due diligence and it's not like that. I mean, clear the air. Not just leave the press as well as the general public scrambling for the truth or what has gone wrong. And this happens all the time. What happens to consumer protection? Have we had anything from consumer protection? Absolutely nothing. This cannot continue. This is a democratic setting. And we should be able to explain to the general public the reason the cost of fuel, uh, cost of air tickets has gone up. They have other challenges that is even far from uh, uh, cost of fare. We're talking the, 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 the germane issues that I actually expect AON to really, really focus on are not being addressed. Let's say, for instance, the ethics that they, could, they cannot source from central Japan is a major factor affecting them. It's a major factor. Why shouldn't they have uh, Jet A12? Why, can't, why, why shouldn't they have access to it in a country that, is, that produces crude oil? I mean, come on, let's, let's get our acts right. Are, are you saying now that, in fact, it's not really their fault as well? And, and, and I'd like us to really, I'm not happy about the increase, and I'm sure a lot of people are not, but do we fully understand the situation they're in? So this question you will answer when we return from our break. Please stay with us. All right, you're welcome back. Well, Mr. Bankole, I was asking uh, whether or not we fully appreciate the situation that the operators are in right now. And when you talked about, you know, the Jet A1, I mean, part of that is not in their purview, uh, as it were. So, really, do we understand what they have to contend with right now, coming off COVID-19 and some of the challenges you mentioned, which are out of their control? Well, to be honest with you, most of the airlines have suffered a lot of losses in the last uh, few months, coming from COVID and now about taking off. Inflation is not helping anybody in the country. Now there's um, uh, high cost of um, aviation fuel, uh, uh, lack of um, access to FX, so many issues. And trust me, maybe they just maybe we just played into the hands, or they just came up with these tactics, and they've gotten the audience that they needed. And the audience is this that we're all getting to talk about it. Well, maybe if we increase the cost of airfare, everybody will know what we're going through. The issue is not only about airfare. There are so many issues they have been faced with. Every country protects their own. You can never be wrong protecting your own. The question is, what sort of protection are we giving to these domestic areas? Mind you, I'm not saying that we're saying they should be irresponsible, but we still need to protect our own. You can never be wrong protecting your own. I was reading the other day talking about giving multiple landing rights to some international airlines to fly to some other parts of the country then how are you going to encourage co-chair? How are you going to encourage them partnering, partnering with domestic carriers? It's never going to happen. You are gradually, gradually killing your own. So we need to revisit how things are done to ensure that these domestic carriers are protected. Not only they are protected, they are well-regulated, that they serve the purpose which they've been established. 
It's very, very right. important. So, uh, Captain Sanusi, when we think about, um, you know, regulatory agencies, we always think about them wielding the big stick all the time, but they have a role also to protect the business, nurture them and help them grow and, of course, meet their targets. He's concerned about government protecting, that's Mr. Bankole, protecting the operators, the airlines, well enough. Do you think the government has done right by them? Well, no, so many things have need to be done because um, the aviation industry, as uh, Mr. Bankole has said, needs to be protected. And then the uh, domestic carriers, they are struggling. There are so many things that... Uh, uh, affects the profitability of uh, the, the local carriers. And the regulator is not only to regulate, but to also stimulate growth, uh, and also to protect the airlines from falling over. Uh, so I think um, the, the needs, uh, so many things needs to be done to, to, uh, to protect the airlines. Uh, multiple uh, uh, points of landing for, from international airlines is not good for the domestic uh, market. Uh, it's, uh, it's the same thing as also over-regulating the market. It's not going to be good for the domestic uh, carriers. Earlier you spoke, my, my apologies, Captain. Yeah. Any, earlier you spoke about other cost elements yeah. that the aviation sector bears apart from fuel. Yeah. Is there, what are these other cost elements? Um, are, are, they, are there some of them that can be removed to help bring the costs back? Oh, yes. There's so many things that can... can can policies that co government can put in place to reduce the uh, the the burden the, the the Nigerian airlines are carrying um, multiple taxation for instance uh, you pay uh, you pay NCAA you pay NAMA you pay FAN uh, the the cost of uh, using facilities in the airport is high just and a just a moment uh, these three agencies you spoke with about, they are all government agencies. They are all government agencies. Federal airports. Federal airports authority. Authority of Nigeria. Nigerian Airspace Management Agency and the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. How do their fees differ and what are the specific functions of the fees that you pay to each of them? Okay, so for the Federal Airport Authority, they are the providers of the airports, the tarmac and the rest of them and the fire cover that you have. So you pay, uh, they call it... Uh, passenger service charge, you pay that to them. Um, and that increases your ticket. If fund increases it by 10%, that means your ticket fare increases by 10%. NAMA provides you with navigational uh, facility that allows the airplane to take off, navigate to Abuja, and land safely in Abuja. So you have to pay for those services. Now, um, if that price increase, of course, the airline would transfer it to the customer. Then the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority also takes 5% of the ticket sales. That also increases your, your uh, price of your you ticket. You told us the function of other taxes. What, the 5% the is for safety oversight, meaning they are regulating, so you have to pay for the, regulate, regulating, um, the regulation they do, the oversight they do, so you pay 5%. Of, uh, of every ticket you sell or a cargo that uh, you take. So um, if, if government was to make a policy, just as you have said, how significantly will that bring down the cost of FS? Well, in the first instance, I think there should be one tax, one tax that uh, airlines should pay to the, to the, to the government. government. Globally, yes. Uh, naturally, it's, it's, it's been that. And the, the regulator is usually usually most uh, uh, aviation, uh, civil aviation is usually funded by the government, not the airlines. Because look at it, if the airlines are sick, meaning they are struggling, so meaning the funding of the oversight will be also affected. And that's what's happening. Mm. Interesting. So, <laughs> I mean, if this thing lingers, I mean, so passengers aren't flying as they ought to, Airlines are making as much money as they ought to. Those agencies will start growing lean, as it were. So this yes. is they're in this together, as it yes, were. Yes, exactly. But your suspicion might maybe be based on things that have happened in the past. Yeah. Has this ever played out in recent times, or you know? Yeah, they, there has been times when when uh, the the airline organization wanted to to come together and and. Uh, and increase the, the fare of uh, ticket fare. And uh, we objected because I don't think it's right. As I said, there is a smart and intelligent way of increasing fares because you have to study the market. You don't want to overprice yourself 
out of the market. You have to study your consumers. You have to study also the economy of the country before you increase your price. And when you increase your price, you don't increase it uh, just uh, by a figure. You increase it intelligently based on science that you have seen and with a percentage and you increase it by taxes because they are fair basis. You have uh, NY and all those fair bases that you have on your ticket. When you buy your ticket, you see the, the taxes. And you can see that the, the base fare will remain the same, probably. And then the fuel surcharge will be probably increased by the amount the fuel is increased. If it's 40%, you increase it by 40%. And then you look at your cost. As I said, there are so many cost aspects to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, airlines operation in this country. So we, we objected that time and uh, they agreed. And you can see that the, the, the increase from when it was 25 to when it became 35 was gradual. And the passengers did not and feel it that so much. much. But when it became from 35 to 50 was sudden and unanimously done. That's why I think it was a bit suspicious. So I'll ask both of you the same question, <laughs> yeah. but let me ask Mr. Bankoli first. So, I mean, from 35 to 50, and that's why when I saw, you know, 25 in the previous you know, searches and I see 50, I'm like, wait a minute, this could actually have taken me twice. So what kind of price would you think uh, would be intelligent enough at this point? So we're at a point where it's grown to almost times two. What do you think it should have been? Well, um, to be honest with you, it, it's going to be difficult to say that, are we saying that the 50,000 naira is not justifiable? I mean, if we put the figures together and they can justify it, then there's no problem. But there are better ways of getting things done. And that's why we have the regulatory arm that can ensure that these airlines do not just suddenly increase their prices without recourse. What, is, what, what happens to airline waving VAT on the, uh, on the purchase of spare parts, waving custom duty, just to help these domestic airlines stay in business? You have the opportunity of looking into their financials. So there are several ways you can you can control the airfare from becoming astronomical. Can I ask you a question? The question is this. For people that are time conscious and are very careful about their life, they're probably not going to go by a road to certain parts of the country. They probably want to fly. So people have been left with no choice other than to embrace the fair as it is. So the government plays a vital role in ensuring that the cost of well is minimal because the truth is the airline wants to stay in operation. If the fare is too much, it's too high, and they are not getting passengers, then they will be forced to reduce the fare. But in this scenario, the passengers are there. And for me, one of the things that I believe the airline should have done, they need to increase the service they render to the general public. You have delayed flights, no compensation, passengers are disgruntled, nobody's saying anything to them, and at the end of the day, what you give to them again is you hike the, fi the, the fare. I mean, who does that? If you can hear me, we'll, we'll come to that in, in just a moment. You want to you wanna quickly respond to that question yes. as well? Yeah, um, we cannot say 50,000 is, is fair or is not fair. Each airline, as I said, has its own financial model. And they're supposed to look at, uh, intelligently look at how they will increase their ticket to respond to the demands or to respond to the cost that uh, they, they, are, they are operating inside. So it, it's not uh, a figure. I cannot come out with a figure if, uh, to tell you that this is the right figure. But um, if we're going to look, if the airlines are complaining only on fueling, Jet A1, then you look at what is the increase in prices of Jet A1 from November, December, January, February. And you see that averagely it's about 35, 40%. So if there is an increase of about 35, 40% on fuel surcharge, I 
think that is fair. And if there is other things that uh, affects or uh, increase their cost, for example, the sourcing of dollars, or the dollars have, uh, is quite expensive, then that justify increase it more, increasing it more. But it, more importantly is you have to be sensitive to the market. And you, have, you don't want to overprice yourself out of the market. Do you think that this decision has been taken with sensitivity to the market? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because you can't raise prices uh, just from 25, 35 to 50 at one go. Do, do you think it's the market reacting now with the low patronage? That, I think that's what's going to happen. You see, the problem will be uh, the, 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 the leisure travelers, those that can afford uh, to travel by road, uh, with, because the time is not of essence to them, will go by road. And those that uh, will go by train, they will go by train. Okay. And then we're losing the market. We're supposed to stimulate the market. We're supposed to, to ensure that uh, disposable income are used to buy our tickets. You talked about other cost elements. I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Bankoli something different. You talked about other cost elements which influence the, the rise in the airfare uh, all, altogether. Uh, do you think people are aware of this? Do you think the, are the, re the, the regulators conscious of these other things and the, re the ripple effect it will have on the air airfare costs? Well, I, I think the federal government is very much aware the, of the pains that the, uh, the airlines are going and that's why the Federal Ministry of Aviation have championed the fact that they should remove VAT, they should remove uh, custom duties and other stuff to make sure that uh, they reduce the cost of uh, operation of an airline. But how about the, those other costs you the, mentioned? The, the other, other costs, uh, the, uh, the taxes, are the ones that uh, we're still fighting to make sure that the federal government understands. I mean, we cannot continue to do the same thing and expect to have different results. But these agencies that you talked about, they're under the federal ministry yes, of aviation. Yes, exactly. So. so that's why we're saying we're still uh, telling the federal government that, look, it's not working. If the airlines are not performing very well, it affects the, uh, the, the, the agencies. If, if we stop getting uh, passengers, it affects the agency. So there must be alternative way of funding, especially the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, whereby its, its function is very vital uh, in, in aviation industry because it's overseeing safety. It regulates the airlines. And if these airlines are not generating enough money to give them the 5% to, so that they can do an effective oversight and regulate and stimulate the aviation industry, then something is wrong. And that is what is happening. You know, this increment was like adding salt to injury, as it were, because people have been grappling with the service, the quality of service uh, with some airlines in that sector. I, I know you smile because, you, <laughs> I mean, this is like an endless till. <laughs> Let me begin with Mr. Bankoli uh, on, on this one. I mean, copy in a meal uh, which a passenger has been having with a particular airline, I think this is United Airlines, uh, about, you know, flight being cancelled just hours before a uh, flight via text message. I think this was as far back as October 17 last year. Until today, uh, it looks like they're still having back and forth with, are you going to refund me or not? And this is someone that has been tenacious, sending mails, you know, constructing the English very well in an understandable manner. So. Increment on the one hand, but the quality of service in the aviation industry, how close are we to an end? Now we start with the, uh, the regulators again. We used to have a, uh, a directorate that was in charge of consumer protection. What happened to that directorate? At a point, this was moved out of the um, out of the agency. The truth is, we can't be doing the same thing and expect different results. Things should be improving. We shouldn't have things falling apart. And it cannot continue like this. For, for every airfare, there are conditions to that ticket. Some of those tickets are non-refundable. Some are refundable. Some are just taxes refundable. So there are different fares, different categories. Maybe this particular passenger had bought a non-refundable ticket. The conditions to that ticket 
is what the airline is going to go with. That's why the fact that they cancel that flight. And there are different reasons why they cancel flights. I'm not speaking for the airlines that the services they've rendered in the past have been the best. As a matter of fact, I most times when I'm going to the airport, I just say to myself, is whenever the plane is available that I fly, so that I don't get myself unnecessarily worked up or upset. Because what other choice do I have? I don't have a private jet, so it means I have to rely on these commercial carriers. So the truth is, we need to look at it holistically to know hear me well. where it has gone wrong. If you can hear and me, then, Mr. Bankole, just a moment. On that same issue that you raised, there are those uh, airlines in this same country that are always on time. Some are notorious for not being on time. There are those who are always on time. So I'm wondering, while you say that people don't have a choice, but then clearly there are choices. So is it a function of the regulator now or the airlines themselves, the airline operators themselves, playing their part to ensure that they do the need for, especially about timely takeoff and landing? Yes, we have some of them that are extremely reliable. But there's this thing that we call law of precedence. If I've done something once and I've gotten away with it, there's every tendency that I'll do it again. I mean, nobody's holding me responsible. I keep passengers at, the, at an airport for three, four hours, and I come to them and I say, oh, technical challenges, and they take it. Or we outrightly cancel the flight for technical challenges. There's nothing you can do. If they say the aircraft is not serviceable or it's not good at that particular point in time. You are not going to say they must fly by force. So there are excuses that the airline uses and they get away with things. So mm -hmm. this is where the regulator comes in right. to ensure that we have disciplined people managing this uh, um, airline. It's very important. So uh, thank you, Mr. Bankole. Captain, I'd like you to have the last word on this okay. as we wind down. Yeah. So how hard is it to give a refund? Because, I mean, there's been promises. We're working on it. Fill this form. Yeah. Okay, we're getting this and all that. How hard is it to make a refund? How hard is it to inform ahead of time? How hard is it to apologize? Because some people just want to hear, we're really sorry for this. How hard are these things? They are not hard. And, you know, delays and cancellations will always happen in aviation, globally. Now, how you handle it as an airline, that's what, what matters. Now, there's so many things that uh, you see, especially in Nigerian aviation, that cause passengers to be disruptive, to start breaking the, uh, the computers and all that, because the way the airline communicates the, 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 the delays or cancellation or the refund, I'll come to the refund later. But there are so many things that 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 uh, that that contribute to those uh, uh, mis misbehaviors that you see from passengers. One of them is even the environment. Let's take uh, you have a delay in Heathrow, or even a local airport, Manchester, or maybe in the United States. Let's say uh, a small airport. The environment, the toilet, the uh, the the, uh, the the food uh, canteen are all good and you would like to go there. So if there's a delay of two hours, you are not really um, worried, especially if you're a leisure traveler and you, you don't have but any business. That's the job of a regulator, I, mean, I imagine, to make the place conducive. To make the place conducive, it's the airport authority. Now, you cancel a flight. First, the passenger went to the toilet and the toilet was really bad. And then the sitting place was horrible. And then th to put more the airline now just announced cancellation of oh, the delay for another three hours. He's going to sit in the same kind of environment. Of course, the passenger will be, uh, will be, uh, will be very angry. Now, cancellation and refunds, because you buy tickets differently. You buy tickets through travel agent, through uh, uh, credit cards, through debit cards, cash, bank transfer. The airlines usually uh, refund the way you bought your ticket. So you can buy a ticket uh, with a credit card and expect cash refund at the, at the counter. Now, the, the airline has the responsibility after canceling a, a flight 
to, to ensure that even though you bought your ticket, they make alternative arrangements for you right. and they make sure that you, you get uh, to where you're going. You can imagine if somebody uses last 50000 for the month to oh, buy a ticket goodness. and then they cancel the flight and then he doesn't have money to go back to, to the hotel and the, person, the, uh, the airline is telling him that come back three days to get your refund. That's, 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 that will definitely that's, hurt yeah, more. That's going to hurt him more. Oh, yes. That's another conversation we can't continue. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it, it's been quite instructive, the points yeah. made here. Yeah. And we'd like to thank you so much, Captain Addison, who's the welcome. aviation expert, yeah. as well as Mr. Bernard Bankole, uh, who joined us via Zoom. He's the chairman of the Association of Airline Training Organization of Nigeria and the chairman of Finch Glow mm -hmm. Group Limited. Gentlemen. Wish you a safe trip. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank well, you. A, few, a few messages just before we go that uh, came from you, Oladile Olagunju, about airline operations. Pass, 